<laughs> uh, completely ignoring Kenny's remarks from <laughs> to starting this. I don't know what you're talking about. Episode. I don't know what you're talking about. I, I do. That's a problem. I plead. So, <laughs> and so does Ducky. All right. Uh, certainly. If you say he, so. he, he just pleaded the fifth. Uh, he, he pled the fifth, but he's still a witness. That's what matters here. Speaking of which, <laughs> I'm going to miss that game on Wild and Out. I'm going to miss Wild and Out, bro. I really enjoy Wild and Out. Logan They're going to ruin Wild and Out before the, it ends. So that's the worst yeah. part about it. They're not going to outright cancel it. They're gonna they're gonna have somebody else host it. And it's not even gonna be somebody that like is compatible with the like formula of that show. It's gonna be somebody. It's gonna be somebody. It's gonna be somebody so foreign to the culture, like Ryan Seacrest. He'll be black. They're, they're gonna get they're gonna get my fucking Mario Lopez to host Wild and Out. Nah, that's how it terrible. is. That's how it is, guys. <laughs> No that is, I hate to tell you guys, that's how it ends. <laughs> they gonna mess around. Oh, oh, yeah, the out. Yeah, that's how it is. <laughs> I'm Chloe Kardashian. This is wilding. No! Out. Oh my no! God. Wilding, wilding out. Well, wilding out. <laughs> no. <laughs> Welcome to wilding out. With it's like with four W's because of their Californian accent. Wilding out. <laughs> give it up for the blonde squad oh my god <laughs> they probably get, um, they probably get to, uh, to the day like, get over the oh, give Lord, it up for the now. brunette squad <laughs> now. speaking of that no. what does the opposite culture while and out look like no I don't uh, want to know I don't want to know don't don't even don't does even it look like now. whose line is it anyway no, essentially, yes. Whose line is funny though? It is. it is, but nonetheless, essentially. Yeah, because white folks, yeah, white folks love whose line. Love it. Yeah. Old people love Family Feud. I know. My parents watch Family Feud. You take that back. I like that. Damn. Feud. Yeah, watching? but you're old, bro. You I'm not watch. old. I just like you're, to laugh at Family Feud. You're like younger than me, shows. but you're still I old. Like, I like, I don't, I don't I like game shows. Like I, I when I grew up, I, like I used to watch too. like the old game show network, like Car Sharks and all those. I used to love it. Oh, like, it's a game show too. You know, like Supermarket Sweep and I love Supermarket Sweep. American Gladiators. I love American Gladiators. Shot to um, the drop. The floor is lava. You know, active shit. The yeah. floor is lava. That's not. You never watch the floor is lava. I mean, I've seen it. But I was talking about like classic games, like a hundred thousand dollar pyramid. A hundred thousand dollars. Or pressure luck. Kenny's favorite channel is the Game Show Network. <laughs> when I was growing up, like, it was yes, 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 it was. I used That's... to watch. I used to watch Baggage. I used to watch Deal or No Deal. I don't like Deal or No Deal. It's just whacks me. Yeah, it got watered down at some certain point. The newlywed gang. I used to watch all this stuff. Yeah, no. I'm banging with Jeopardy. Jeopardy's Jeopardy. 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 always been shit. I still watch Jeopardy. Jeopardy's hard. Boop, boop, boop. Jeopardy's you know always going to be hard. I'm banging with um, how, to be, how to be a, who wants to be a millionaire. Oh, Before yeah. Jerry Cruz was the host. Before who? Jerry Cruz. He was the host at one point. He hosted two wants to be oh, Yeah, that's how Washington it got. I haven't watched. He said, I'm not I watched it yet. I stopped watching it after Regis left. Regis was my host. Was he actually? Oh, he was. He really was. Regis though. was. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was. Damn. Oh, and um, Weakest Link. The Weakest Link was fire too. Weakest Link. Yes, I love the Weakest Link. That was dope. That was dope. And growing up on those Nick game shows, like Figure It Out, man, Double Dare, Guts, Global Guts, Legends of the Hidden Temple, bro. Hard. Dope. Legends of the Hidden Temple, but that's what Flores Lava is like. Legends of the Hidden Temple, essentially. Yeah, yeah. I always wanted to go on Legends of the Hidden Temple. Me too, man. I just couldn't Who afford didn't? to go. I couldn't afford you, to go out there and try out. If you were a child of the '90s, you grew up dying to be on Guts or Legends of the Hidden Temple, 100. or figure it out. Maybe not so much for me. I like figure it out because I can never figure anything in life out. <laughs> hey, that's too much. Guts. Let's get deep. Let's 
it's way too deep to talk about. No, that's a, little, that's, that's a little too dark for this time. Yeah, it's very dark. It's very dark. Teresa. I can never figure things in life out. Wow. I, still have I, start, I started saying that as a joke, and it ended as the truth. <laughs> I don't, drink, I, I don't like how that ended either. <laughs> but hey, <laughs> I didn't lie either. Right. <laughs> At any rate, all right, Guts, Legends of the Hidden Temple. Those are the two main shows you wanted to be on when you were growing up. All right, time. let's settle this really quick before we start. Right, Which one is better? Um, out of those three? I, no, out of Guts or Legends of the Hidden Temple? Guts. Guts. What I doubt in my mind. It was underrated. Completely. Yeah, totally. I, I, I'll tell awesome. you what, right? You know how Netflix got episodes of Supermarket Sweep and shit? Yeah. If Nickelodeon yeah. were to have like a Disney Plus like streaming service, which they probably do. I, I just need to look hard enough. But if it was, you know, popping enough and they had archives of Guts and Legends of the Hidden Temple, guess which I'm binge watching first. I'm probably watching Guts. I'm binging Guts first. No I doubt. Got the, I got the hot uh, take you know here. What? and I got the hot take here and say Legends. No, you know what? Here's the thing. Legends is more... Um, it has more nostalgia. And, like, um, I'll tell you one thing. If they try to, like, resurrect the show, which I think they're already doing, like, um, no. you can already, like, hear, like, the, the flaming arrows of appropriation from the cultures that, like, the show borrowed from. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, like, cool, like, Legend of the Temple had, like, a bigger set and, like, a bigger budget. But, like, Guts, that was, like, that was back to basics. You know what I'm saying? Like, they got down. Exactly. They got busy. And, and, and literally. I think, I think I was just biased to Legends. It might be. Look, I, yeah, I, I, everyone, I, everyone is. They're, like, the Legends of the Temple is the default, and I prefer the underdog. Here's my thing, right? Guts was the perfect show for Nickelodeon because that entire show worked around that entire network's bread and butter. 100% the slime. <laughs> you see it. <laughs> That's true. Green, you know what I'm saying? Like, it set stoners down a path. And I'm not going to lie. You know, that aggro crag was vicious and that super aggro crag was dope. Come on. Talk to me. And then they had the snow and shit. Okay. Okay. Let's go. I'm starting to change my mind. <laughs> he gets the starting to change my mind. I can call <laughs> Caleb right now. And he's literally right down to stick. And, and, and ask him, and, 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 what was the better better show? And I'm 85% sure his answer would be lead, uh, uh, Guts. Shot on the dark. I see it. You know what I'm saying? Like... Yeah. It is completely undeniable. I see it. Especially watching kids my age slip and bust their ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, I couldn't skate because I was trying to like break no bones, you heard. Nothing like <laughs> it. Nothing like it. And, and, and me going, I would never end up proceeding to slip and bust my ass in the shower an hour after Ooh. watching the show. Ooh. That explains so much. Wow. You know what explains a lot more? Caleb dropped me on my head when I was a baby. Of course. Yeah. Live via satellite, it is Gorilla Gang Podcast. I am your empathetic yet foul mouth third of this show, Gaithersburg's favorite son. Actually, shout out to Gaithersburg's first son, Logic. No pressure out now. We don't, get, we don't get free promo on this show. No uh, free promo, yeah, but gang. like let's we gonna get these jokes off, but that's gang and we're keeping it real. Exactly. Home, home is home yeah. and the homeboy is the homeboy. Like, However, back to me. You, but like, hey, well. <laughs> Young Raspy God, Carlos Crawford, aka running with a patriarchal nickname for my prowess and a particular pay-per-view with a losing record in said pay-per-view is Chin Music Charlie. <laughs> I'm glad you guys got it. AKA yes. Dick Flair. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the dopest of them all? And for seven years, that mirror has said, Why, Pantry Boy, it's you. Who else? 
Don't put that camera on Bussy Rose while I'm on TV. Keep that picture on me, man. I am. <laughs> A.K.A. Snack Miller. Days get mixed up. Schedules get switched up. Can't be two places at once. So I uh, take a hit of the spliff that I lit up and forget I had to be anywhere at all. <laughs> <laughs> AKA Gelato Graham. Mm-hmm. What, does Washington think they're a soccer club now? <laughs> <laughs> See, that's not fair. You can never mind. Go ahead. Let me, let me get it off. I was much more clever with it. AKA Ricky Spanglish. <laughs> Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. AKA Ricky Spanglish. He's the reason I'm homeless now. I used to be the CEO of a Fortune 500 company. He ruined my life. <laughs> Ricky Spanglish. <laughs> let, me, let me do it. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Ricky Spanglish. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, aka Hey Stack Bless. All right, kid, how you want to do this? Calmly or aggressively? I prefer effectively. Good choice. All right, Mr. Morham, Mr. Hashin, covers on, follow my lead. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a robbery. But not to worry, we're only here for the bank's money, not yours. So long as you don't give us a reason to. Kid, if you could please convince the kind fella behind the counter to direct us all to the bank funds, please. Unlock the gate. Now! Now hurry up and open the safe for a hope of your skull. All righty, now. While I understand this is where you all keep your hard-earned, completely replaceable money, we also understand that you're also here to take some out, so I'll make a deal with you fine citizens. While my buddy relieves his bank of their funds, we will honor your withdrawal so long as you're honest. And you don't tell the cops what's going on right now. You keep your words, we won't feel the reason to kill any of you. You leave here with your money and a story to tell your friends. How's that sound? Wonderful. That being said, the money is replaced in days anyway. So it's no problem for you guys. They got to honor legal transactions. If you write your business on the slips, we will accommodate you. Kid, how are we doing back there? Almost done. It's a large haul. Leave a responsible amount for these folks for cooperating with us. What? I said what I said. We're robbing the government. Not the honest. Fine. Gentlemen, we're getting looks out here. All right, everyone line up, and when you receive your money, please remember, this is a normal day at the bank if the law asks. And please exit in a timely fashion and act as if this never happened until you get home. Moose, if you could please go ahead and introduce yourself to these five people and calm them down, please. <clears throat> well, then. Never seen a robbery where we pay folks, but that's cool. Son of a do. I see. Black Robert. My name is Kenneth Wicker, aka Hendrick Soul, the original owner of the Millennial Falcon. So Flying this here so vessel good. better than anybody in this here galaxy. I do the little Uzi verse shirt and something like, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, last yeah. Jedi, I do or do not, there is no try. Like you will bust down for the homeboys. No thoughts, y'all. Right. <laughs> hey, hey, Mr. Ghost Slick Walker. My brother used to always say the nasty shit like he called me Hyman until I was 12. Seth, I want to blow you. Okay, she didn't say that, but. <laughs> Ah, it's from a movie, 
and it's funny. <laughs> she says throw a movie and it's funny. <laughs> yeah, she's trying to AKA, AKA, AKA the American scale of the road. Then Flair, I hear you over there talking out your mouth. Talking about how you are better than the American scale of the road. Well, let me tell you something, daddy. What you don't know and what you should know and what you want to know is that the American scale is always ready to break down some good old-fashioned home-cooking bun whooping. Yeah. Booty. <laughs> That's right. And yeah, the very sexual. The very tight. Very tight, yes. Austin Powers Faja. Wait, it's Faja? Dad. Dad is Faja. Oh. Fa there. Fa there. Fa I like the accent, though. Mr. English Colonel telling me to lose weight. <laughs> well, guess what? I ate a baby. Baby, it's what's for dinner. <laughs> oh, fat bastard. <laughs> oh, let's see where I'm at. Did I forget one? AKA. Pill. No, I'm just playing. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Like, I have to tell you, like, my first appearance on the show when I heard that one, I'm like, oh no. Like, <laughs> I, I mortifying, isn't it? Like, I'm just like, yeah. I, I'm I, sorry. I, I, the Bill Cosby impression is a funny impression if you do it tastefully. Have you been doing it tastefully, Kenny? <laughs> Maybe I should do it tastefully so we can enjoy a good laugh. No. No, please don't. No. Aw, no, pudding pops. Sorry. Pill Cosby <laughs> had a guy. Hey, you know where I'm going with this. Like uh, how? I just like, that's where I, that's, you, you use that's your imagination the first, for the rest of that that's the first. That's the first Go impression the I did as a child, and it's kind of sad that I really can't really do it. Nothing gold can stay. You, you you have excellent impressions of very problematic people, and I'm not a Philip. Like who? You don't have a good Trump impression, on, aka sir, aka <laughs> Vincent Kennedy, black man. Everyone's calling my friends' impressions problematic, and I understand oh. you. We gotta be able to succeed and thrive in a culture that's about progression because you people want to see progress and not regression. So I'm on here for the movement and I'm here for everyone to get on their feet and to get over a systematic oppressive system that's going to keep in each and every individual that is not the same color down. You going to stun me after that, Austin? <laughs> Uh, amen. <laughs> oh, I can't breathe. <laughs> the bad thing is I know what's happening and I just can't stop it. I try to be positive, but I'm still going to get stunned. <laughs> oh. You know what, black man? Finally, we can agree on something. <laughs> Freezing. <laughs> what? This, this is another note this week. Right. See, you got to change things up. We were back. You know what I'm saying? They, they agreed on some stuff. You know what I'm saying? Every now and then. Like once. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They, they, they were, uh, I mean, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Austin sold his soul to become champion one time, bro. All right. You want to talk about problematic people? Hmm, that part. Desert Man. 
the most problematic of them all. Yeah. The quadratic yeah. equations are problematic. <laughs> <laughs> that alliteration, though. Let's get it. The, <laughs> <laughs> the improper fraction <laughs> of problematic. The absolute value of problematic. <laughs> Oh, the theory of relativity are problematic. <laughs> <laughs> the E vert equals MC square problematic. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hold on. I think I got one more in me. Hold on. Give me a sec. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. The ECR problematic. <laughs> ECR. The ECR response of problematic. <laughs> Wait for yourself, my friend. It, motherfucker, if that ain't hard. <laughs> well done. The pin dots are problematic. <laughs> That's it. That's that shit right there. The calculus of problematic. <laughs> there it is. No, no, no. Wait a minute. I think I've topped that. The crickets. I don't know no higher, any higher like level of math. How about uh, C plus plus? That. <laughs> that's that's that, uh, that's the extent of my math knowledge, right there. <laughs> with that in mind, I'm gonna get my shit off because my macaroni's getting cold and my dumbass needs to go to bed. But I'm so happy to have been with y'all for the last hour, blessing my soul with laughter. It's your boy. Chris Kennard, a.k.a. Chris Kennard, a.k.a. Say my name twice like I'm from South Korea. Dugum, dugum, dugum with the onomatopoeia. Okay. <laughs> That's so problematic. Okay. Okay. What? But it's okay. Okay. We don't, okay. We don't, it's okay. We don't, we don't talk about <laughs> guest <laughs> balls. <laughs> we don't talk about <laughs> guest <laughs> balls. It's okay. <laughs> All right, I gotta stop making those K-pop jokes. All right, it's cool, it's cool. <laughs> now, um, the last time I was here, um, I mentioned a particular um, treat typically eaten yes. in the DMV, and that shit went mainstream. You heard about it in New York, you heard about it in Canada. Yeah. So I had to edit that drawing a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Um, back then, they called me the Gobbler, but today, a.k.a. I am the Glizzy Generator, okay? Oh, my God. <laughs> If you know, you know. <laughs> All right. I don't know if I, I don't know if I she's the buzzer or the cherry. <laughs> <laughs> Both. <laughs> I've, I've updated one. I've updated another one later. You're gonna see. Um, AKA prepare for trouble and add a McDouble. <laughs> Strong. Oh, niggas be hungry, okay? <laughs> oh, on a spiritual level. AKA Live on stage with the dilated pupils. <laughs> hey, 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 listen. The vibes, very well aware of it. Yes, indeed. <laughs> she pressed some things on me. I got some vibes for her, okay? <laughs> hey, now. Sensation. <laughs> <laughs> That, that's sensational and I get pro okay that's cool sensational <laughs> aka the black Anthony Fantano aka the black Narworth the human serviette oh, don't you know aka the high priest of the friend zone <laughs> hey gentlemen you know what just, just on a quick tangent if you know any man in your life who calls women by fucking bitches, you call them a Ted Yoho. That's word to AOC, okay? Shout out to my boy, Ted Yoho, you're a bum. AKA, the CEO of Napatone Records, because my follicles are in a deep slumber. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking now, bars. Now, now, now. Bars for a nickname. Recently, recently, um, they, I used to be the Secretary of State, but I've recently got um, um, a promotion. So you can call me the Susio Senator of the United Susio States of America. 
<laughs> God bless the CCO. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <I'm saying. laughs> wow. My niggas stay kneeling, okay? We out here. Oh, oh, We're out the, here. The new John. The new John. I almost prom- I promised the new one. I, I promise. New John. <laughs> I'm thinking like I gotta get bigger, I gotta get badder. Now what can I do? What's the what's Absolutely. the black, what's the blackest weirdest thing I can think of? And I thought about my nigga Basquiat. I am <laughs> The Basquiat Blicky Blaster. Oh, <laughs> wow! <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I be painting on the internet. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no shit! <laughs> wow! <laughs> That's what you, you know the name, Mighty Ballard. Your boy Ducky. Take K in the change for Christopher. <laughs> <laughs> Very powerful, very strong nicknames. Hallelujah. Strong nicknames, man. Very strong nicknames. Absolutely. Very powerful, Bloody very wrong. strong nicknames. Like Listen. I said. Listen. Sorry. <laughs> Listen. I, I, I um, was on Twitter this morning uh, before I had to drop Kinetis off. Because my, my morning's off consists of getting up at the same time I would to go to work in order to take my my younger brother to work. Your beloved. Yeah, I'm a good brother, I guess. Uh, so I'll take him to work. Yeah. And however, when I get in front of his apartment or whatever, there's like a solid five-minute window that, you know, He's like, all right, I'm coming down now. And he still has to take the elevator down and come outside. That five-minute window I spend on, like, you know, Twitter or uh, Facebook. Time. This morning in particular, right? Yeah. That rapper Tay-K, uh, you know, got the murder charge. Yes, unfortunately. That, uh, uh, he, 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 a killer killer? A, your killer's favorite killer, maybe? Sometimes? Perhaps. On occasion? Yeah. Hooray! Uh, I I I I learned that he was very much about the lyrics that he was spitting. Like they're like uh literally. They they say something along the lines of like, yeah. Anytime I listen to like a uh Tay K bar, I'm like, yo, he 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 was really about that life. He like, probably actually did that, yes, unfortunately. Yeah. Muzz like reciting uh, lyrics of it. I was like, "Yo, this shit is hard," but I, I believe every word he says of it, and that scares me. Like, like you hear a gangster rapper usually, and they talking about guns and such. It's like you know that's usually for the cameras. Nobody's really into that stuff anymore because they're rich now. You know what I'm saying? Right. For the most part, they have sure. money. They don't need to do that shit anymore. There's no need to like you know kill other people for what reason or one reason or another mm. so but you know they probably done it in their past so yeah they're, they're, they're valid enough to talk about it Fake name. so you know you, you, you take you take rappers like that and you're like all right i respect that they've done it so they can talk about it they because they were about it that nigga he was doing. He was about it while he was rapping about it. Like, yeah, that man was on. Um, he would probably life. rap about what he was going to do to somebody and did it like a week later or something like that. Eh. That's concerning. <laughs> yeah, like well, I think what really bugs me the most because like TK lived the life that he lived, and like, what am I going to argue? I'm not going to argue with that young man, but like, the fact of the matter is, he was in jail, and like, the label is eaten off of his like his clout, and. I, I there is no chance he's probably gonna get off of that shit. But just like the fact that they get like they get to keep all the money that was made. Um, same with like the Bobby Schmurder. Yeah, you 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 would hope that it would made it, they would have like sent his royalties to his commissary. He's oh, he's okay. not he's not coming. He, he's dying in jail. You know, saying? Saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? He, he's dying in jail. We'll, we'll never hear another. We'll never hear a new Tay K song unless that shit was unreleased material. Okay. 
He's he, he's more ghosts than people. <laughs> yeah, you feel me? Speaking, like, of, he, speaking he, of rappers, what? Mm. did y'all see <laughs> the DMX Snoop Dogg versus battle? I did not. Who won? Did I, bro? Wednesday. Oh, oh man, who won? Snoop won. Wow, but what a show! There but DMX go, right? put on DMX was so tired, yo. It was so hilarious. Was he like me and Tangy oh, were dying man. laughing because he was like, Hey, he was dancing all uncoordinated. He was like, Out of breath, out of shape, out of breath. Oh, no. He's like, Normally, it's normally why you have to do this. Don't, don't, oh, you know it, Ducky. Oh, no, it, it's a part of getting old. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? You gotta remember, yeah. these rappers are like in their 50s now. All right, DMX was like, especially no, Snoop. Snoop was a grandfather. When he okay, used to do, he granted still, he can still crip walk. He played, and boy, can he still crip walk, bro? But he's still old. So is X, so old. and X has had years and years of drug use, hard drug use, not oh, just man. weed. Up to you. Yeah. Bro, add that all up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that just, man, that man, DMX said, "Normally, when I used to do this song, I take my shirt off." But you see the situation going on. My started coming off tonight. What? <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah, I respect that. <laughs> I wholeheartedly respect that. Now, nah, when he did that random growl, not even within song, like he wasn't even rapping to the song. You know what I'm saying? He he, he was just like, I think he was just adjusting some shit, and he just started randomly growling. I I lost my shit. I was like, nah, man, <laughs> I'm through. So you know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? Like, you know what Know what a dog needs. Like they, need, know what a dog needs. They need their own show. Like Snoop has his own podcast. Yes. Yeah. GGG. With, with you know uh, DCTV. But I need. I, I, if I could watch Snoop and listen to DMX hmm. for an hour long, I would. I most certainly would. More than anything in the world, I would <laughs> love to hear DMX talk about his like you know candid stories of fatherhood and of like you know just being in the rap game and just like his ups and downs in life and i am a hundred percent sure he ends every episode with a prayer and the oh, prayer is a quarter of the show <laughs> in, in true black like in true black culture what oh you know <laughs> Lil walk with us. As you learn, I said, that person has Make 25 sure minutes better than anybody show, else. Let us see what we can see. That's what we got to do. That's what we got to do. It's really please you. Step away our according to your word that you give us. <laughs> oh, yeah. All that. I need all that. That is content. Oh, no, man. I need time. that. As I pray to the wicked, do what I do better. <laughs> Let me put down this weed in this Beretta. I'm sorry. <laughs> My man is dead. He went back to life. <laughs> he ain't moving. Oh, come back. <laughs> That's how he pray. That's how he talk. Oh. Hey, yo, man. What Cat Williams say? Hey, yo, man. <laughs> What's the earth to the number seven? <laughs> Someone has to revive my boy right there. He's gone. Oh my god. <laughs> Put on the red nose right there. Had a very dry needle. And if you ever... <laughs> Come on, you wouldn't even say it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wake up, bro. Yeah, I hate you. I hate you. I love the other reindeer. You love the And I dead ass, I play that every Christmas season. I bet you I do. Should. Every and Christmas you season. That As I you should. Okay. Have you seen somebody put his ad libs into like the Read It Rainbow song? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Butterfly in the sky. You throw DMX ad libs in roughly anything. It's amazing. I, I I can respect. I'm willing to put money. I'm willing to put money on that. Um, you hear me? Multiple dollars. 
You put the, you put DMX ad libs on the theme song, The Family Matters. Gold. <laughs> it's oh, a yeah. rare condition. Come on, this day and night. What? What? Let's get it on. Man. The grand design, girl. Some people say. You think it's a game? <laughs> give, me, give me DMX ad libs to the theme music to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh, that's a watch That's funny. That's the situation. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Come on. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Come on. What? Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Why, why, why is DMX barking during a turtle song? Who cares? It's DMX. Listen, listen. Hills in a hot shell. Turtle power. They're the most ruthless no, of fighting I team. The, like, I, DMX was, I, um, I, he was smoking on turtle soup. Okay. Let's see. Yeah. What? Whatever, whatever songs we can put DMX ad libs to, it'd be great. Thundercats. <laughs> Thundercats. <laughs> mm-hmm. <be> Thundercats. <laughs> thunder, oh. thunder, 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 cats. Come on. <laughs> Ducktails. <laughs> Ducktails. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, life is here. like a hurricane. Here oh. Duck bird, come on! <laughs> nah, man, you gotta put that shit on like DMX on Dark Green Duck. That's a situation. Dark Green Duck, let's go! Dangerous. What? <laughs> Where there's trouble, you call D Duck. Come on! <laughs> yo, hey yo, oh, yo, hear me out. Hear me out. Just, just somebody, follow me here. You about to say something crazy? You about to say something crazy? This might be low key anti climatic. I'm setting this up, but, but just follow me here. Okay. DMX and Libby. Mm-hmm. The theme music to Doug and its cutaways <laughs> musically. <laughs> Not my son, Doug, bro. Hey. Hey, Doug. hear me out. I got one. We, I got one. We was talking about this earlier. What was we that? put DMX ad libs on the global guts uh, instrumental. Oh, <laughs> do, 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 do you have That's it? Hard. Come on, do, 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 do you have it? What? <laughs> <That's hard. laughs> on everything. That's on everything. Let's get it on. <laughs> Son, you can even throw DMX ad libs on the theme song, The Family Guy. Like, it's undefeated. DMX ad libs can go on like anything, bro. You can't lose. DMX ad libs, and I'll tell you what, Griselda ad libs. That's uh, uh, that's another fun set of ad libs to use. I see you too are a man of culture. <laughs> you, you see every the vision day, too. Right? <laughs> every oh, day when you're that. walking down the street, come on and everybody that you meet. What? <laughs> Imagine West Side Gun doing the ad libs to Arthur. <laughs> That's too New York. Walking down the street. <laughs> Hey, put DMX, DMX. Yeah, the butcher and, and, uh, and the uh, <laughs> extra verse. Don't do it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the butcher doing the hot Arby's somebody, and the packs. <laughs> somebody, somebody on internet world needs to put DMX ad the Ark of the Butcher. Somebody need to put the DMX. Butcher. No, so, no, wow. no, it's Buster the Butcher. Don't get a twist. It's Buster the Butcher. Buster okay? the Butcher. Buster the Butcher. He going to eat the beat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm fucking weak. Hey. <laughs> Somebody need to put DMX ad-libs on uh, Golden Girls. <laughs> no. No. Thank you for being a friend. Brrr, bo, 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 bo. 
Thank you for being a writer. (laughs) 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 But that's your thing. It was Brenda, Leticia, Linda, Felicia. <laughs> That's funny, though, man. <laughs> That's funny, though. You named the cast of Golden Girls and their real names and shit? Right. All the songs. All this. He did that second verse on the live and forgot. He, he was forgetting the lyrics. He was forgetting the names. It was the best of us. Was like, bro. That, that's what happens when you throw that many names out there. Like, I, I, matter of fact, when I was watching the verses, right, and they were playing the jump, I literally used my fingers to count them all, and I lost count at about three Kims. Oof. Wow. And, and, and you, you fail to forget, like, there's many names after that. <laughs> I mean, then the patience you had to have to write that and make sure the names rhyme at the end of the rhyme scheme. And to have it all flow within mm-hmm. scheme. <laughs> Cookies. Well, I meant underrated. Under ice cream parlor. <laughs> underrated. And you know what? That's why I, I've always hated DMX Slender, to be honest, because DMX is one of the most underrated artists of our generation. Yes. As proven as because like, he was playing hits, I, it, 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 I was like, Oh, I forgot about this. Because here's the thing he, he, his flow, I mean, like, his his delivery precedes his content, you know what I'm saying? For sure, sure. Honestly, T Chain's funny as shit to me. Oh, I love T Chain, gotta love T Chain because T Chain's fucking smitten. Oh, two chains. Hey, here's the thing: two chains be rapping his motherfucking ass off, right? Two However, chains. true. That should be comical as hell too. Hold on, it, it be now, hard, but how he delivers it, be funny as shit. Hold on, like, case in point. Case, case point. Neighborhood hoes by Freddie Gibbs. <laughs> My favorite part in that song, right? He goes, you know what? And folk, that's a get dope. How did the six niggas in the pinto with the vent clothes? Period. Menstrual. Sentimental bimbo. Telling me they love me. But been with all my kin folks. No. I lose it every time. I lose it every time. All right. Hey, hold on. We're talking about the man. I lose it every time. Hard ass line, but it's funny as shit to me. Okay. Since we're talking about the king, a.k.a. known as Titty Boy, I got to do this one bar and I got to roll. Because, you know, this is crazy looking at me kind of funny. You know what I'm saying? But um, his first, the first big jump that he had, um, um, right around I'm getting it, and he said, um, when we had sex, we was in a Mercedes. Now, I'm not crazy, because if that baby mine, then we gonna have a name that little baby Mercedes. <laughs> Hard, but comical. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> you know, I ain't gonna be on that gas like she be on cinema. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even finish it. Don't. Please not. I, I smoke strong like <laughs> Red Dime is part time. Black Dime is part time. Oh my God. <laughs> hey, yo. Shout out to Trap. Why you can't help but to laugh at the, like, at the audacity <laughs> of his lyrics, but you I also know. think about it like, damn, that's a hard ass line. Like, you can't help it. I think all of my friends know like the two chains versus the mercy because like that's how iconic that was. Bruh. Like two chains bars. Like it's like yes. You gonna say this shit out of nowhere? Like thirty dudes like just come out just getting just get hyped up to coop the call. Now I'm like, <laughs> I'm telling you, like son. I, and you know what? That's literally a realization I came across while listening to that song. Like, I just bust out live. I was like, this one with 2J is a genius. <laughs> a fucking genius. And we don't give credit where credit's due. Like, we know 2 Chains is dope. 
But it's like we've always enjoyed him as like a novelty artist. And I think we should take him seriously now. <laughs> I think it's about time we start taking him seriously. Year, for real. Listen, I, I, I think listen. we should start taking him seriously as listen one of the greats, not just a novelty artist. <laughs> listen to me. Pretty girls love trap music. Hard. Sorry. Oh my god. <laughs> <It's a vibe. laughs> I was like, that's oh right. <laughs> what an <laughs> album. What an Yo, I gotta album. Pick I gotta pick him out. <laughs> he said, like, he said he was gonna Son. change your girl like she's Drake, and then he's gonna like make her leaf like a rake. <laughs> to, put it, to put it in perspective, right? To put it in perspective, let let's let's go off of two chains for a slight moment. Ooh. One of Drake's top three hardest verses all around overall is in that album. <laughs> you hear me? The big girls up trying, really? That first verse, the big amount, son. I mean, he was I goddamn right. Christina. He, he, he skated on the seat. He spazzed on that, yo. He skated on that beat. Figure skated. It was like Blade of Fury. Never he was Chaz Michael. of Mariano West End. <laughs> Went off. Drake like he, he up. just he just went un like and I don't say this about Drake, Dougie. I don't mm. say this often. About he does it. Drake went unconscious in Big Mouth. I'm gonna look up especially he even throws out the he even throws out the the fact that you know you know he, he is singing as nigga, but you know he sang it while sliding this entire beat. Got the Billboard mm. melodies, rapping something I do on the side, cross over to the other side. And I didn't even have to die. <laughs> what? <laughs> so I don't like Canadians. <laughs> like, like he, he 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 figured out the flow immediately a, a, as the verse start. You know what I'm saying? The first four bars he gives you, you know, the main line of the uh, of the song or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then once he starts that line that got the Billboard melody, he just rides that entire flow out the rest of the song. And that shit is incredible because not only does he ride that flow, he also variates that flow midway through the verse mm-hmm. and, 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 and kind of like goes in with it. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it's impeccable. It's an, it's more than anything in the world. And yeah. from what I'm hearing, from what I'm hearing, what Bob did, he uh, went back to under pressure, Bob. Oh yeah, you know what? I was just like, listening. Like, I, 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 I've been three days ago. I put on like um, the joint he had with Jaden on um, Young Sinatra for the lead joint uh, on um, the Incredible True Story, and then like. Uh, Never enough off the first John, like man, never enough is probably my favorite song by Bob. Never enough and intermission, those those are my favorite two. Oh, and we get high. Hmm. Those 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 are the best three songs that he's ever made in my opinion. And he's made some solid music over the years. Child gets up and be like, "Dad, you be rapping?" He's like. Damn, trying to get back in the booth. We know, we know what's coming. That, like rappers don't retire, bro. They don't. Well, here's the thing, right? Here's the thing. Unless you're Andre. Um, the thing is, is that when you retire your profession at a young age, <laughs> nine times out of ten. You already have another lane that you're looking to jump on. I uh, jump into full time. He can write books and like make movies the rest of his life, and I'm totally Bro. into it. But like the bars are coming. Like I'm like 20 years down the line. I'm like nigga, we told you coming back. The fuck? You're on. Nah, I doubt it. This, this man lost made me look up the lyrics to the big amount of Drake's. <laughs> oh no. Mm-hmm. That man said, "I got a big amount. <laughs> Think I'm the biggest out." Got his name. Got his name. Put it out. 
got a bit more melody. Got a bit more melody. Got a bit more melody. Got the money and I never show it. Let the nigga try to play wrong. Michael Jackson talking to me. Michael Jackson talking to me. Him and Drake didn't say bad and you know it. Better show on my chest, man. I'm a Jay Pritchard best, man. Niggas let it talk. Niggas trying to talk reckless. Then like see me like best friends. <laughs> Got the same color action. And I've never seen the inside of a Mary Young. Five, Five stars, stars nothing less than. than. <laughs> niggas Fuck like niggas when you pay, bro. And, and you, you let them know the same. Ain't no for a month, though. though. But, but you call a nigga big, bro. <laughs> you can move to the hidden yeah, hills and yeah, still yeah. live by the yeah, same code. I respect it everywhere I go. Niggas long live paper. Get the rainbow. rainbow. <laughs> Twenty style shit that is straight to the pot of gold. Somebody, everybody know. Six God with the God flow. <laughs> Good night. <Yeah. laughs> I have nothing more to contribute to that conversation. Uh, Just... <laughs> Just slid that beat, though. Especially after he said best friend. Like, you're like, oh, he wilded. But as soon as you say he wilded, he just destroys you with enough, like, four to six bars. Like, what? That's definitely one of Drake's hardest verses. Bro. I can't sleep at night. Like, the whole time you hear that, you just like, ooh, 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 ah. <laughs> The O's okay, get higher and higher each time. Enough. You get higher style with you. Ooh. Son. Literally, my every time I listen to that verse, my face ends up being like the that white kid that was me. But not to be <clears> stepped <throat> on. Two chains verses. Two chains verse. Of course. That but that's what I'm saying though. Like it goes what I'm saying now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> now that we've established it, it's like we can remember two chains verse and be like, that shit was hard anyway. You know what I'm saying? Mm. But that album as a whole was hard as shit. So it's like when you hear Drake spitting that verse, it's like you really got to zero in now because it's like, yo, this is a this is just a feature. And I think that I think that verse and Western Road flows. That's two out of my top three from Drake. Western Road, he goes crazy on Western Road flows, bro. Son, he, he bring. I, I think the come home uh, bar, the come home set, set was just amazing. Like, a, as soon as he goes, I had to take a second. I, I had to breathe for a second just to uh, make that line to get it. I, right. I forgot that one part. However, West the road flows by top of this level getting settled. Uh damn. I forget the one line about pack backpedaling. Don't let your newfound fame fool you. It cloud up your judgment. God damn it. How come I can't remember that? I, if the song was playing right now, I could give it to you live for live, but I can't remember it shit like by heart. If However, my computer, if my computer was next control. line was the stupid says Vince Carter was uh through the says Vince Carter <laughs> says Vince Carter was doing between the legs arm and the hoop shit drinking hypnotic with Van Lewis. I've been through it. Yeah, y'all know the rest of the lines. But just put that line that that entire that br- that bring home right there. Just amazing, like that. That was Drake's skill as a rapper to the fullest. And this is you know the man that does not really bang Drake like that. Exactly. I tried to put some Drake in his car one time. He told me turn it off. <laughs> and because I can give you an exact analysis as to why I do and don't like certain music. For everything, I I enjoy. You know what I'm saying? On that That's why I like. A, uh, you know what I'm saying? That's why I'm a tough critic of uh, other people's interests and things. Sorry, I, I, I definitely no, no, no. Honestly, Loki, <laughs> like I may have to just like isolate you and like just like interrogate these things. Um, I will take a quick moment to plug my channel. Um, you can find me. Yeah. 
on the YouTubes as K R I S K E N A R D. Um, your boy just cracked 200 subscribers, 800 more, and then we can get some ads. So, if you're if you're, you're bang with me, you better bang with the Gorilla Gang. I'm going to. I, I said I was going to leave like half an hour ago, but I had to stay because like, <laughs> these motherfuckers have me it, 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 every Friday. It gets good. Listen, it gets like, good. It gets great. If you know, you it's know. Good. And like, I'm so thankful to have these two gents. Um, just keeping the light in these just like dismal days. So for that, gents, sincerely, thank you so much for having me. I can't wait to be back in about a month. <laughs> <laughs> man, you're always welcome to join the show, man. You're always welcome to come. Absolutely, back. always. All right, bro. You're, you are a friend of the show. Absolutely, the world, sincerely. I'm gonna Absolutely, I'm gonna, all, I'm gonna have you all as guests. You can't see my chest because it's too hot. There we go. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. I'm waiting on that. I'm waiting on that invitation. Actually, so, let me know. Oh, what? Did you go to come on yours? Oh yeah. Yeah, easy, easy. Let me we in. We need the crossover episode. One hundred percent. We definitely really need the crossover okay. episode. We need to do that. All right, bros. I'm gonna eat my supper and go to sleep. Thank you so much for having me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna exit the stage left before it's too late. <laughs> You and the missus have a good night. Yes, indeed. Love y'all. All All right, now I'm out. (laughs) Yes, indeed. (laughs) We get it all on here on the Gorilla Game Podcast, bro. (laughs) It never stops, bro. You better subscribe. (laughs) What? Fuck hey. that. What he said to the beginning of the night. And I don't even know if that y'all even upload to the channel, if we're being honest. But this motherfucker said, <laughs> You have a fair tone. <laughs> no, I don't think that made it on, bro. I don't think that's the thing that made it. I don't think that happened. I don't, I don't think I don't think we should revisit that. Because I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. I'm just not. <laughs> I'm just not. <laughs> Oh man! Oh man! Nah, we had we had a hell of a night, Kenny. Hell yes, we have. Final thoughts. Uh, respect to chains. <laughs> oh wait, I do have something I wanted I wanted to bring up. So remember, I was talking to you earlier this week. I think that was maybe wasn't even early. Probably yesterday. Probably Thursday. And I was telling you about the guys that I put on the Mac Miller. Ah, yes. Wednesday or Thursday, one of them. So one of the dudes came back to me today and was like, bro, bro, bro. I was like, what? What was up? Now I wonder what song he discovered. He was like, bro, I went back, bro. (laughs) And I went through his catalog. I was like, okay. I went to the Divine (laughs) I was like, oh. <laughs> he was really? like, which, I, said, which, I said, which song do you like? He's like, bro, you mean which one I didn't like? <laughs> really? I was like, is that so? I was like, yeah. I was like, oh. Okay, he's like, he's like thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> I was like, you are welcome. <laughs> The divine feminine, huh? Yeah, that, that, that that's that, what made him tick. That's right. that's what that's what got him over. I was like, oh, and I wasn't even bad. That, not, that was great, but swimming. Well, can I confess something to you? That's not one of your favorites. Least favorite Mac Miller album to me. Really? I literally have to be in love in order to enjoy that album. I've concluded. Maybe that's why he enjoyed it. Maybe he's in love. <laughs> Yeah, well, that that's dope. That's beautiful, then. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's dope. That's beautiful. Cause listen, I, I, no, cause that ass. I tried to sit and listen to "Damn" the other day. Uh-huh. Didn't to through the entire song. So like, eh, and just changed the song. Like, "God Is Fair," "Sexy Nasty" is my favorite song in that entire album, and it's the last song of the entire album. But nonetheless, my favorite song of the entire album. I haven't listened to that in quite a while. Years I think, I think he liked uh what did he say he was vlogging with? Uh Cinderella, I think you see. 
I think he said he liked that, and I think he said, uh, what was that? Good AM. Ah, yes. Good morning. Yep. Oh my gosh! Now that that was an album. Like, here's my thing, right? Ever since Mac passed, I have had like a like, I guess you could say a retrospective on his entire catalog. Yeah. And some albums have jumped, some have dropped, in my opinion. Um good morning jumped a couple of spots in my in my opinion because my thing is that it was overall an excellent album overall like a solid nine out of ten if you ask me but to close out the final thought went out to uh not to cut you off because when i saw him leaving today could be his punch in the car i asked him what he was listening to he showed me guess what he was playing uh i, I could guess all day small worlds ah uh. hmm <laughs> And then the crazy thing was, I was just about to turn that on <laughs> as I was leaving out the door. And I heard him saying, the world is so small till it ain't. I said, till it ain't, till it ain't, till it ain't. <laughs> I was like, you singing those? I love I love you that. singing the lyrics? He was like, yeah, bro. I've been binging this joke since you since you played it. I was like, okay. That three, that three pack was excellent. As a matter of fact, I spat a line out of that three pack earlier this episode um but yeah because it uh he dropped a three pack literally or a day or so before my birthday man yeah exactly this and, and keep my swimming came out in august he passed a month later not even a month later swimming came out august 31st mag died that following week Yeah, bro. It's, oh no, wait, no, no. August third. It's crazy when you look back. He, and he died the following month. So yeah, it's he like died, he died September seventh. Yeah. So it, it's like I I've listened to that three pack prior to swimming because like it was the new all the new music that I had for him up to that point. So I'm like, yeah. Swimming is about to be dope as shit. However, this three pack, we going, we going, you know, kick to this. I hope Buttons is on swimming. Turns out Buttons wasn't on swimming. It should have been, but I understand why it wasn't. Program definitely should not have been on swimming because it just didn't have that feel for that uh uh that album. Boy. However, another solid track. The so album. Good. Huh? All I'm saying is for him not to be here and, to be, and for circles to be so good, it's like, bro. The album, the song that actually made it to the album that was part of that three piece set was "Small Worlds." That's what I was getting at. Yes, but I'm, I'm just talking like circles is so good, bro. Circles was amazing. It's so and good. honestly, circles, <laughs> circles is what made me go. All right, I think I have to like you know re consider his uh entire catalog and my thing is i like late era mac that's my that's my favorite i'm just hoping he got some more unreleased stuff bro he has a whole bunch of unreleased stuff however however i'm pretty sure it's not edited all the way through. no because um that one joke newspaper that that job was um supposed to be on Good Morning. It was unreleased material from Good Morning. But the reason why we can't find that on YouTube anymore is because it was uh taken down by copyright. Uh by VMG. So it's like we they have unreleased music. We've seen it. You know what I'm saying? We've seen mm -hmm. it. We've witnessed it. I've rapped lyrics 
from some of the unreleased material if you go back and listen to the last uh, the 90s of this uh, epi- uh of this set of episodes so <clears throat> yeah so we've heard it there is unreleased material however they're not ready to officially release it yet exactly i think it's crazy how two of our favorite artists are no longer here like yours is mag and me but like bro yeah man and here's the thing about mac though it like uh, on a quick side note before we uh before i give you my final thought i usually with rappers unreleased material they like it kind of waters down their legs like you think of tupac and all the unreleased yeah. material that he had and all the unreleased material that they ended up putting out and it just watered down his legacy or even biggie his posthumous uh albums that wasn't uh life after death or born again all right watered down his legacy it, it so like so a lot of these rappers their uh unreleased material comes out posthumously and it kind of waters down their legacy son the unreleased material that I heard from Mac Miller might have heightened that shit. Man. I kid you not, that kid can rap, could rap his fucking ass off. And that's the one thing that I've always loved about him. Even when I was like, you know, and back in college when I first started listening to him. Like, that's the reason why I started fucking with him in the first place. Because he could rap his ass off and he was very technical with it too and that's what i enjoyed about it, it was like a breath of fresh air it, it, that's what made me go all right i can definitely fucks with you because you have you have the soul of a 90s rapper you know what i'm saying so at any rate um <clears throat> my final thought of the evening is Well, I I actually um have a childhood friend of mine's family in mine right now. Um, my man's Brian lost his oldest brother, uh, Omar, recently uh, over the past few days, and that. It, 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 it's like, I don't know how, I don't want to assume, but, you know, for it to be so sudden, it, it's just absolutely sad. And yeah, man, I like, I bag on my older brother a lot, but it's like, not having him around would suck. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It, it's never it, it's never easy losing a loved one that somebody you care about. It, it would suck. It would absolutely suck. And it's like, and it goes with my entire family. It's like, no matter how much I want to literally get away from them, <laughs> <laughs> I, I just can't fathom the idea of them no longer existing. You know what I'm saying? And I, I always say this about this with um my friends as well i hope i die before anybody else i know goes because that shit hurts and, and thinking about this makes me miss dylan thinking about this makes me miss fitz makes me miss malazzo and it's like i just wish they were all here still you know and they're not. Um, so I guess the I guess the point I'm trying to get across is tell your people you love them. All right, it, it's time to start normalizing. You know, telling all of your loved ones that you love them on a normal basis because yeah, life is too short, but. These are also people that are, you know, riding for you 
whether you like it or not. And as often as I don't, that's another thing that I understand as well. It's like, you put me in a bar fight, I already know it's going to be on my side. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I, 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 I tell them I love them more often now. It's like, I, I already tell my, you know, parents that I love them. That's, that's simple. But with masculinity being toxic one way or another, I don't often get an I love you from uh, my brothers. I, you know, coax an I love you out of my younger brother every once in a while. Uh, you know, if I were to say it to my older brother, he'd say it too. But with him, it's like just a word. Uh, so. <laughs> He's a womanizer. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. But, um, <laughs> but no, uh, my, my point is, is that like we, we need to start making it, you know, normal that, you know, we tell people that we love. Yeah. Yeah, man. I feel, love you, bro. I feel that all the way. So, yeah, I love you. I feel that, bro. Cause, like, love you too, man. For me, like, for me, I lost my dad. And that was, like, probably one of the worst, like, heartbreaks I ever felt. And I really, I feel like I didn't really get to tell him I love him enough. You know what I'm saying? Even though he knew I loved him and I knew he loved me. But yeah. the, la- the last image I really have of him being home was him on the ground. Like on, on the pavement, like and getting put in the ambulance. Then I got visions of him in the hospital bed, and then one night we leave, and then like a couple hours later he's gone. You know, so it's like you got to tell your folks you love them. And for me, my uncle Reg, man, like the last memory I have of my uncle is when the Eagles won the Super Bowl. He was at my house, and we celebrated the Super Bowl. And then a couple months later, yeah. Uh-huh. And it's like, damn. I told him I loved it when he left, but it's like, I really didn't get to say, you know. Well, and then, and then it's a it's a boy of mine I grew up with named Bilal. He was in the military. And I had to hear from like his cousins. I heard, no, I heard it from one of my friends, and he was just saying it on the casual. He's like, yeah, man, Bilal died. And I was like, huh? And he was like, what? And so I was like, yeah, but he's like, but loud that. I was like, what? And I like broke down crying. And it was like, you all right? And he's like, no, that was his boy. Like, we grew up together. Like, he lived right next door to me. Like, we were always, he was always together. So when I heard that, that like really like, that really like shocked me around my world. So I feel everything that you're talking about. Make sure you tell your loved ones, man. You love them because you never know when it's their last day here. And my, I lost my grandfather and my father in the span of what? Four months? Jesus. Four, five I, months? I think I can actually like equalize that because my uncles passed like maybe a few months apart. And they were twins. So it's like, yeah, I, I feel you on that. Like, yeah. And then- it, it, that is heavy. Dude, I'm, I'm and then sorry. a couple, then a couple, like maybe, maybe not a couple years, maybe a few more years later, my uncle got murdered, bro. And these people live in Philadelphia, bro. So you know what I'm saying? Like, the city is rough. You know what I'm saying? I love Philadelphia. You know, I love going out there, seeing my family, but the city is rough, man. And it is. It was. It was too. A too. He got murdered by a, a, a ex of his, and like it's it's. It's terrible. Like, and my uncle was one of the like sweetest people ever, bro. Like, he always gave advice. He always looked out for folks. So it's like to hear about that, man. It's like really hurtful, and it's really like it really like hurts you to your soul. Like, and like when you around these family gatherings, and like, cause our family is like really tight knit, right? So yeah, everybody knows everybody. We get along. So when you add these family gatherings, and you don't see these people that you grew up with, and you now that you're older, you can really talk you know, life to them and really get advice from them and they're not around and you you think about like how 
you didn't really have the time to build them because I didn't really even know my uncle Rev's my uncle for a second because it's like it's so many people. <laughs> it's like I don't it's know. Our yeah, it's a very big family. So it's like I don't know. I don't. I didn't know everybody for a second, and I kind of felt bad because it's like. He's saying my uncle, I don't really know because it's so many people and I don't I haven't really got to talk to everybody, you know. I'm I was a little kid, so you know, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not nah. like you, you just so, you don't know. know until it's like it, it, it's either missing or gone. Like yeah, even, yeah. even crazy point. I had a cousin, I have a cousin that was that went missing randomly for like a, a week or so. You know what I'm saying? Like she's back. She, you know, ended up back home. But man, that was a stressful week. Yeah, yeah. I, Boy, think, uh, I think I think I shared looking for her too. I think I know you're talking about. I actually I do know. Yeah. That. Wow. yeah. Yeah. So it's like, and it's like I don't even see her often. But again, to even that's still family. And it still hurts. Even fathom it. It, it. That that's a it's selfish as a human, but it, it's terrifying as well. Yeah, like, I don't know. like it, it is. And like, and yeah, we gotta like really value life and value people's lives that we have in our life. Where we have because again, man, you never know what we got to us, y'all. Like you said, and like we have yeah. to. Like us as black men, bro, we got responsibility to the to the to the uh, to the culture, man, and to the world. To express ourselves and not be afraid to do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, not be afraid to tell another man that you love him. You know what I'm saying? That don't make you no type of punk or no type of anything that we like to like trivialize and make it feel like, you know, <clears throat> that we that that's not that's something taboo to talk about when it really isn't. It's like, if you can tell your son you love him, you can tell your brother you love him. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, for me, and that's why I, that's why for me and you, I call you and check on you all the time, and I call and check on people all the time. Or at least I try to remember as much as I possibly can. I'm not, I mean, I'm not the best at communicating sometimes. Oh but, shit! You, you, you I already know. do a better job than I do because <laughs> I'll think to myself, "Hey, man, I should probably hit blah 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 up and be." And think of one other thing and just completely forget to do so. Like for the past week and a half or so, I've been meaning to hit up my like childhood, my best friend, my sister, Louisa, and I've yet to hit her yet. And she's delivering a baby at some point in the next couple of months. Like, <laughs> like it, it, it'd be nice to check on her, right? But I don't know, man. Life be life in. And yeah. I just forget to do so or one reason or another. I just I'm just not. And that it's a terrible habit of mine. And I need to get that shit. I need to tighten up on that shit. I do. Yeah, but it don't happen overnight though. Like you gotta really like just assess your value of these relationships that you have with people. You know what I'm saying? And and that's what I'm doing because like if it's yeah, a point, you, know, like, you know what I'm saying? So it's like we got a responsibility as as men, you know what I'm saying? Look out for the ones we love and, and and make an effort to keep in contact with the ones we love because like we reiterated reiterated through this whole uh last final thought, man. Life is short, man. Life is precious. And we can't go through our whole lives like living for other people's approval because at some point that's only gonna break you down. And it's going it's gonna do very big damage to your mental health overall. And you can't live for others like you know what I'm saying, opinions and achievements and approvals. Yeah, to have to value someone's opinion is cool, but at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying, if you are putting more precedent and more weight on their opinion and not doing enough to do what you can for your life so you can have the best possible you possible and always progressing and putting yourself in a state of, of stagnant, stagnantness and not wanting to grow, that's maybe that's something you got to evaluate and, you know, Remove yourself out of that situation, you know. Everything don't deserve your energy. And everything don't deserve, you know what I'm saying, for you to feel like you can't make your way out of it. Everything doesn't deserve for you to feel like anything that's putting you in the position where you don't feel good about that and it's, you're taking it on and you're internalizing it to the point where it's depressing you, it's not good energy to be around. So, and if you kind of convey that to somebody and they don't really respond in the appropriate way, as hard as it may be, 
you know what I'm saying? You got to distance yourself from them. It, it, may, it may be hard cause depending on some relationships, you know, because it could be a parent. It could be whatever. You know what I'm saying? And those relationships, you can't necessarily, you know, cut off. But you got to give yourself an appropriate distance and an appropriate, like, method so you can do what you have to do to keep yourself in a mental space that's only progressive. You know what I'm saying? You can't keep yourself in a, in a space that's regressive, that's depressing, that's making you feel this way and all kind of feelings of guilt and shame and suffering. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. See, so, me, I have a bit of a sociopathic complex a bit because I have conveyed that to people and they simply didn't want to understand that and that's why i have lost you know some friends recently or i haven't talked to a lot of people recently as well like my my thing was a falling out with an old friend that you know people didn't understand it's like yo i'm not it, it i've been dragging it on for years but that friendship ended a long time ago when he did something that was a whole nother low you know what i'm saying and i you know let the shit slide for to a certain extent but even then like after that there have been you know bickerings fights arguments like, I just felt like dude was not doing anything to, you know, help me with my life, to help me better myself as a person anymore. And, like, a as a friend, you're either supposed, you're either teaching me something or you're learning something from me. That's the way yeah, I look at it. Absolutely. And, it's like we have a synergy of teaching and learning. But with me, it's like anytime I try to teach him anything, he just simply wouldn't listen. And it's like, all right, what are we doing here then? You know what I'm saying? And it's like whenever yeah. he tried to give me advice, it, it, it just it, – my older brother might as well have given me that advice. You know what I'm saying? The so best, it's like the best relationships are the ones that build and, and humble you. You know what I mean? At the same time, it's a relationship where it's like, okay, I know if I do something that's fucked up, right, or I do something that's not necessarily the best, or then it took me out of my character, a real friend's going to tell you, like, hey, bro, you shouldn't have did that. That took you out of your character. But at the no. same time, it's like, yo, I see what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? You're working hard. You're doing what you got to do. You're keeping your feet to the mud. And you're pushing. Keep it up, man. Keep going. Don't give up. Don't quit. You know what I'm saying? At the same time. At the same yeah. time, they'll let you know when you're wrong and when you fucked up at. It's at the same time to let you know what you're doing good at. So anybody that's not bringing that kind of positive energy, and I had to tell a friend of mine that 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 was going through some um some um some problems. I don't want to really put too much information out there because that's not in my my business, and I don't want to put right. the information out there. But I told I simply told him like, listen, I know how you feel this way about this person, right? But any kind of energy that's putting harm to your mental health. And that's putting you in a position where you don't feel like you're able to like be happy or you're always depressed, you're always down, you're always feeling like you less than. That's not a relationship you need. You know what I mean? Like yeah. at this point in time, you gotta look out for yourself and build yourself up mentally to the point where if you are in the position like that, you won't you'll get hit on the canvas, right? But you won't stay there. It's okay to be down for a second, it's okay to like mope. A little bit, you know what I'm saying, and, and 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 cry it out a little bit, but the key is not staying there. You know what I'm saying? And for a long time, I stayed there. You know what I'm saying? I've been, and I know how it feels. I've been down. You know what I'm saying? I've been not wanting to move. I've been down there to that bro where it's like I can't function because I'm just so in a spread state of depression where I don't even want to try to do anything, and I don't want to be there again. That's why I'm doing everything I can. You know what I'm saying? To keep from being there. You know what I mean? Mm. All right, I need therapy and medication. That's that's all. Because uh, I'm I'm going to be there for the rest of my life. But nevertheless, um, yeah, and and that and and that's the thing. But that's the step that you take to not be there. 
You know what I'm saying? Oh, and, yeah. that, and that's and that's what I'm talking about. Like you take you know yourself, you know your triggers, you know the wow. things that get you there. Just like I'm discovering my triggers, the thing that get me there, and I don't want to do that. And and I've been in therapy for what, what a month now. Yeah, man. I'm I'm cool right. with it and I and I'm love it. And I'm like, I don't care what anybody has to say about it. I'm gonna keep doing this to the day I die. Because it's like we're always progressing, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, bro. I know I may not be like I've given the appearance of somebody that's strong minded, strong willed, but I got my days, yo. And it's like, and no offense to like people, you know what I'm saying? Like my moms and, and stuff like that. Cause whenever I think of tell them that, you know, they play some part in my, you know what I'm saying, problem. They try to tend to make it think like, you know, that they're the worst parent or she's like she's the worst parent in the world, they're the worst person in the world. That's not the case. It's just the way that I respond to stuff. The way you kind of did things, you may did things, may not necessarily been the most heavy thing for me. And that's the problem that hard people that people don't understand. They don't, it's not like it's not that you're just, you know, the craziest parent or anything like that. Cause I've seen some pretty sick parents or some pretty sick motherfuckers, you know what I'm saying? That does some oh, yeah. some some horrible shit to people. All right. I'm not saying you're on that, you're on that level, but it's like at the same time, it, it, you do have some flaws. Man, you know what I'm saying? Like you're not <laughs> where you are. It's not you know what I'm saying. Well, that generation gets offended at the idea of the fact that they could possibly do better. Yeah, like they don't want to. They don't want to unlearn previous behaviors that may be toxic, and that's the problem. And I and I may lie to myself. Like I'm always going to keep myself in a position where I'm not going to be in a position where I'm just stuck and I'm not willing to learn and I'm not willing to fix myself, correct my issues. Like I don't want. My my children to suffer the same thing that I'm going through because it's something that I did because I'm not willing to learn because I'm not willing to listen and I'm not willing to make them feel like they can express themselves to me. Exactly, and, and you know what? That's the one thing I want when I have like if I have children because I uh, I don't know right? like it not have it for you, bro. And I'm keeping. You say that if your well wishes doesn't, you know, help my reality either. So let's I'm, be honest. No, I'm keeping that so, for you, bro. You're gonna find somebody, bro. Uh, I'm keeping it for you. Don't no. And that's the and that's the and we can't and I'm serious, bro. Don't enter that defeatist mindset, bro. You, I, got, well, you, gotta, you gotta keep that. You gotta keep that. Me knowing myself well, right? I'm not walking the park, Kenny. <laughs> I am far from a walk in the park, and I know it. Here's, here's, my, the, here's the thing. Nobody can walk in the park, though. No, Nobody. I, I am, I am the big, I am the nine hundred of walks in the park, Kenny. Remember how long it took for Tony Hawk to land nine hundred? That's what I am, as a person. Like I know that I am a work in progress, and my work will not be done until the day my life is over. As any human, that's what we're doing here in life. We're being better. That's the meaning of life, to be better. Um, however, given the fact that, well, I'm moody as hell, I don't tolerate people's bullshit. And sometimes I just need to be by myself. I'm starting to realize I may not be fit to have a significant other. Because <laughs> then, <laughs> I'm just going to get upset when the tables are turned on me. So no. Not not now. Probably not anytime soon. Probably not ever. Who knows? Let's see how I progress as a person. But I, 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 I'm honestly, if I can, you know, bring it to Mercy Street real quick. I'm kind of getting tired of the encouragements and, you know, you will one day, Carlos, because at what point does it stop becoming one day and it starts becoming when will? Let's be honest. You know what I'm saying? If it happens, it happens, but I just don't see it happening. However, I you want like, I, and I, I, I get it, you know what I'm saying? Like, when you when you look at your reality and things that you're going through, I get how that feeling because I was feeling like that for a minute too, for a good while actually. Like I I, I understand kind of. I'm not gonna say I totally understand your situation because I'm not you, 
and I can't, you know what I'm saying, say I've been in your shoes because I haven't, you know what I'm saying? But I do understand, like, the mindset of, you know, feeling like no one's going to have that. When would it turn from one day to well, you know what I'm saying? And I get it. But one thing I want to say to you is, like, nobody knows when that day comes, you know what I'm saying? You kind of just got to let it, like, find you. And if you're in a position, and and, and, and this, and, and I know you probably won't, you know what I'm saying, take it as me trying to peer pressure you into something or anything sure. like that. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't want to give that impression off that I'm trying to peer pressure you and do something that you're not comfortable doing because that's not what it is at all. Right. You know what I'm saying? If you're, in a, if you're in a space where you're comfortable with that, so be it. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, if it finds you, bro, you just got to let the thing find you. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's going to happen. If it happens, it's going to happen naturally, bro. And you can't try to fit a square peg into a circle hole. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I'm, and I'm pretty sure you know this already. Like, I'm not telling you something that you don't know. You know what I'm Bro, saying? Here's but, where the difficulty comes in for me, right? Because, you know, I said I'm, I'm, I'm no walking apart. My thing is this, right? At 30 years old, no, well, 29 years old, or the last. 25 years of my life, believe it or not, because I started this romance journey at the age of like fucking four. After my first crush, you know, I don't want to talk about that. I, I say, do you want to talk about this live? Historically speaking, it's what I'm getting at here. In that time span, I have had, or I've been in all of three relationships. One ended because I wouldn't dance with her at a party because I was sick at a party. Why I sh I was at that party, I don't know. I probably should have been there. I shouldn't have been there, but I earned my guts out after she dumped me. I felt much better after that. <laughs> my second relationship. I liked another girl, and I just didn't have it in me to cheat on her. Oh, that's a very honorable thing. That's honorable, bro. Sure. My last relationship was because I was in one of the darkest places at the darkest times of my life, and my head was too far up my ass to really pay attention to her. So it was just a matter of like me being self-centered for the most part and selfish. So apparently you don't have to cheat on anybody to be a terrible boyfriend. So with that being said, if this show takes off, right, and we actually do make a living out of this, and which I hope does happen. Yeah. Um, and somebody does come along. I'm going to have uh, an insecurity about it. Because now it's like, do you really like Are me? you with me for me or are you with me for the fame? Exactly. I feel so, like yeah. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I, don't for, I don't see it anytime soon. You know what I'm saying? That's why. But it, like you said, yeah, I let it come to me. Yeah, man. And you know I'm here for you, bro. Like I'm 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 here, bro. Like back to the point of hand. Yeah. If I were to have children, <laughs> I would want to teach them to be upstanding individuals. Like I'm an asshole. We know this. I, I bet there's a little bit of asshole in everybody, if you ask me. There it is. And children are assholes. I guess what I'm getting at is I don't want my kids to be assholes in the outside world. I want them to be assholes at home. <laughs> and with that. 
<laughs> My name is Kendall Whitaker, aka Henry Solo. I'm I'm tapped out a little bit. It is what twelve thirteen at this time? Yes. Yep. Mm. Hendrick Solo, the original on the Millennial Falcon. Got one hand on the wheel, one hand on her thigh. <laughs> I just couldn't let you finish that. <laughs> I was going to say, speeding through the galaxy, trippy, tied, die. <laughs> Well, that, that ended a little more innocent than I thought it would. See? And honestly, I don't know where I thought it would go. I just was sure it was going to go downhill. You don't trust me. Problem. Okay, last week, I Jedi. Performing <laughs> no, I don't. Performing all, kind of, <laughs> performing all kind of Jedi mind tricks so you get what I want you to get. That motherfucker. <laughs> Yeah, you real recognize my greatness as a black man. <laughs> That's right. That's right. AKA Mr. Go Slick Vodka. <laughs> I know I've done this so many times, but it's just so funny, especially now the way that I'm feeling. These eyes cry every night before you <laughs> never get told. These eyes. They want to hold you again. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> the hands of me and honor. <laughs> what a fucking song. You made a promise to me and, and you <laughs> broke it. <laughs> oh my God. He's not that feeling up and it will be my own Oh man. I was these hey, eyes by the guess who. That's right. AKA <laughs> Dead American Scale Bust the Roads. Dick Flair. Come stock hey. You and me. One on one in that square circle, daddy. One thing you need to know is that I'm gonna be here. Ready to go. And I got the whole world on the back side of the busted road, Daddy. And there's one thing you got to remember. You may be a boy when I go to the spoon in your mouth, but I'm the son of a plumber. And I've been working hard, working my fingers to the bone to provide for those babies back home. And everybody knows that the American Skill does rose is going to come ready and loaded to take the world title from you. You, 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 you. you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, laugh, you bitch. <laughs> hey, yeah, they're very sexual. They're very tight. Very tight, yes. Austin Powers, Faja. Wait. Is Faja? Dad. Dad is Faja. Oh. Father. 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 And looking for something, Mr. Powers? My mojo. <laughs> that man, that joke hit the ground. I was like. <laughs> All the toxic masculinity gone, gone, all of it, gone. baby, baby, good, baby, very good. And uh, anytime we do the photo shoots, no, nah, you're raising me wildly. You're dog. a tiger, you're a tiger. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 no, no, no. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> yeah, and then when he's done, he kill him with the and I'm spent. Right, and I'm spent. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. 
Ajá. A.K.A. This black man. So tonight, I want to formally invite each and every last one of you to the Vince Black Man Kiss My Black Ass Club. That's right. I'm bringing it back for you, each and every one of you people that think just because Stone Cold Steve Austin comes down in this ring each and every week and gives me a Stone Cold Stunner that you people are not going to kiss my black ass is absurd to me because there is no chance in hell that Stone Cold Steve Austin leaves WrestleMania the WWF champion. <laughs> now you listen here, son. The only kissing that's going to be going on tonight is you and my opponent hitting the mat. Now you listen here. I'm walking home tonight as WWE champion, and there's not a damn thing you or whoever the hell is champion right now is going to do about it. That and would be the rock. What? That's it. That's what? the rock. The rock. What? The rock. What? Shut up. I don't care who's it. Is. It could be the rock. What? The Undertaker? What? what? Razor Ramon? What? Razor Ramon. Jeff Jarrett? What? Yeah. The Brooklyn Brawler? What? The Honky Tonk Man? What? <laughs> Gorilla Monsoon? What? Or Bobby the Brain Heenan? It doesn't matter because they're on my list and it's Stone Cold's list. And whoever's on it must be champion because that's who I'm taking out. And that's the bottom line. The Stone Cold said so. Getting hard and harder to get up from the stunners. <laughs> At some point, you know what I'm saying? You did it to yourself. I mean, I had to, man. I, I did positive black man earlier. I had to get You could have kept it going. Could have kept it going. No, <laughs> I got to get the people what they want, man. You know what I'm saying? It's not good if they don't see a stunner, bro. I had to give the people what they wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> Stun him! <laughs> Stun him! Uh, you know me? What? Let's get it on. Oh, man. Rest in peace, George Floyd. Rest in peace, George. Rest in peace, Breonna Taylor. Arrest her murderers. Yeah. Rest in peace, Omar. Rest in peace, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, that was episode 101. Thank 101, you. baby! 101, baby! We're off this. We're 